breaking, racist Oprah just admitted what she'll force on white people if she becomes president. They were searching for years. It finally happened. They eventually found their one true gem after last year failure. Now after years of searching, liberals finally feel like they e seen a woman who can win the presidency. Ironically, the notion to find a TV star candidate was stolen from the fact that President Trump had a bit of a TV career to go along with the rest of his business ventures. It also not lost on anyone that there are no two names more synonymous with wealth in America than Donald Trump and Oprah Winfrey. It quite funny that people on the left kept spouting off that you can have a television billionaire run for president but now they have their television billionaire they want to run for president. Funny how that works. Right? The left has literally copied exactly what the right does because they e unable to craft their own winning strategy. Liberals have found President Trump antithesis and plan to run her against him in the next presidential election of 2020. Winfrey is also boosted by the fact that she has a couple of social justice warrior bonus points working in her favor. She black, and she is she. She has everything that they said Hillary had but without that annoying and predatory bill tagging along for the free ride. The one other thing that Oprah has in common with President Trump is that her career HAS and been in politics. She HAS and had to look over her shoulder and watch her mouth for her entire life. She'd just been giving out prizes from under the seats of her show set and participating in other business ventures that have nothing to do with politics. In the case of President Trump, that didn't matter too much because he WAS and running on a platform of political correctness that where they differ Oprah would most likely be on the plan with political correctness something that America has gotten sick of hearing about Oprah has given numerous honest and very liberal opinions over the years and that is now coming back to haunt her to make matters worse the bumbling mainstream media is jumping up to defend her and it not going well. It's scary to think of Oprah Winfrey in the Oval Office as anything more than a guest taking a tour. Her unashamed opinion on race issues and disdain for white people could be a problem. The longtime TV host has become increasingly anti-white over the years, to the point that she handing down a proverbial death sentence to those who don't agree with her. Her idea is that racism is a problem of the past, so to fix the problem, those who lived in that time just need to die. That right folks. It was a horrible thing she said, and this video would be the bane of her existence if she ever ran for president. Oprah said as much in an interview in 2013, it's difficult to see someone who is considered to be a national leader asking for the death of hundreds of thousands of Americans. It's even more painful to think people would want her to run the country with that attitude. Now, to be fair, she probably write about a small fraction of the older generation. There will always be at least a few people who say racially inappropriate things but they do not stand for or represent the majority of our good Americans. Even if there are a few old cronies with a racist bone in their body, that DOES and mean everyone is like that. That also DOES and mean Oprah should call for a mass genocide of old white people. That is a terrible and racist thing to say. It makes Oprah look like the black female Hitler who calls for the killing of a particular kind of people. Is that who the American people would want to vote for? I don't think so. It is not ever okay to suggest that Americans try to kill people off just because they disagree with someone. What Oprah said is unforgivable and disgusting. We cannot believe she would say anything like that. This probably seems acceptable exceptionally radical, based on what she just said, that someone would try to kill an old person because they e-racist, but it perhaps not as far-fetched as you might think. Currently, California Colorado, District of Columbia Oregon, Vermont, and Washington have death with dignity laws that allow a terminally ill patient to voluntarily request and receive a prescription medication to hasten their death. This practice is also called euthanasia, which is a term that encompasses any physician-assisted suicide and it dates back as far as ancient Greece and Rome. The United States is beginning to accept the reasoning that a person might need to die before their natural time, based strictly on the quality of life. Right now, as with most of the new technologies offered to us, it's optional. If we decide that our life is and worth living, we can end it. However, throughout most of history, it has and been the patient choosing whether to pull their plug. In a socialist society, where it all for one and one for all, Someone always has to decide what will be for the greater good. In fact, euthanasia comes from the Greek words, you good and thanatosis death and it means good death, gentle and easy death. This word is used for mercy killing. Withdrawal or withholding treatment was practiced in history. The correct term for this is ordothanasia, which means ass of death. If you combine that with the incredibly scary and overreaching liberties taken in the Affordable Care Act (ACA), Obamacare, then you can see how we were and maybe still are a hop skip and a jump from the government choosing who lives and dies. If racism is considered cancer that should be cut out, then racism is redefined to mean anything liberals want, 
they would be able to hand down a death sentence to anyone the government wanted, by withdrawing care, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That is what we were promised in the Constitution, but we e now come full circle to the point where we need to depend on another truth given to us by a founding father, we must, indeed, all hang together or, most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Ben Franklin